mythical beasts at Winchcombe Museum. As I walk around the museum, I learn a lot from looking at details, so I thought I would share with you the mythical creatures I have found. There is a very impressive coat of arms which used to hang in the magistrate's court. The royal arms of the United Kingdom are supported by a lion and a unicorn, symbols of the United Kingdom. The lion stands for England and the unicorn for Scotland. This combination dates back to 1603, when James VI of Scotland succeeded to the throne of England, uniting the two countries. The unicorn was believed to be the natural enemy of the lion, a symbol that the English royals had adopted around a hundred years before. And it was also chosen because it was seen as a proud and haughty beast, which would rather die than be captured, just as the Scots would fight to remain sovereign and unconquered. In the collection of police badges, the one for the New Zealand Traffic Police features a winged horse and a kiwi, the national bird, supporting the coat of arms. A winged horse represents liberty and a free spirit. Perhaps the most famous winged horse is Pegasus, and in 1809 Pegasus Bay on the east coast of South Island, New Zealand, was named after the sailing ship which surveyed part of the island. The police badge from Phoenix, Arizona, depicts a new phoenix rising from the ashes of its dead predecessor. This symbolises rebirth, hope, renewal, progress, end of oppression, eternity. It is no wonder that the beautiful bird has inspired many tales, poems and even legends. The history of the city of Phoenix begins with Jack Swilling, a Confederate veteran of the Civil War who was prospecting in the newly formed Arizona Territory. He was travelling through the Salt River Valley in 1867 and saw a potential for farming. He noted the eroded mounds of earth that indicated previous canals dug by native peoples who had long since left the area. Lord Darrell Dupper was one of the original settlers in Swelling's party, and he suggested the name Phoenix as it described a city born from the ruins of a former civilization. The last inn sign from the George Inn depicts St George killing a dragon. The sign was given to the museum when the building was converted to housing units and a shop in 1988. The small coaching inn was acquired and extended by Abbot Richard Kidderminster in the 16th century to accommodate the pilgrims who were coming to visit St Kenelm's Shrine. He had dragons carved on the porch of the George, and these can still be seen. St George, the patron saint of England, is popularly identified with English ideals of honour, bravery and gallantry. However, he was not English, and it is unlikely that he ever visited this country. There is another dragon to be found in the museum. Dragons breathing fire are featured on each side of the crest on a Merriweather brass fire helmet, which belonged to Mr Gillette. These helmets were introduced in 1868 and continued to be used until the 1930s. Two sea lions support the coat of arms of the Port of London Authority and feature on this plaque belonging to police at Tilbury Docks. In heraldry, a sea lion, or morse, is a mythical sea creature with the head and upper body of a lion, but with webbed forelimbs and a fish tail. It is an emblem of bold actions achieved on the ocean in the country's service. Unicorns, dragons, flying horses, other stuff of legend and myth, frequently found in storybooks. While the animals are mythological, the qualities they represent 
are the reason why they are chosen to symbolise a knight, a nation or a group of people. Keep your eyes open and you will find more examples. For instance, next time you're in Abbey Terrace, look at the inside for the plasterer's arms. Each side of the shield stands an Opinicus, a fabulous creature with the head and wings of an eagle or griffin, the body and legs of a lion, and the tail of a camel. <laughs>